So welcome to the Hajime Model Studio channel and I have here two-time champion Nico Suratos. How does it feel fellow champion? <laughs> Oh, let's be honest, you don't really have any competition anyway during this last one. Yeah, during... Uh, when I we already know that okay, gold again. Oh, <laughs> gold again! Not because mine is better, but because nobody really submitted anything that's bigger than mine or even... Or even something that came close to mine, so... Oh, we'll just pursue it with a shot of her entry this year, but that's not what you felt last year. Last year, I felt that I could come home with silver because of Rowan. Rowan is, has been joining uh, GBWC and GMKC for the past five years. And gold, silver, gold show with Kaplamo, which is also a GBWC champion. So I felt like he could win over me because his work was kit bash, the painting was nice, the presentation was nice, but thankfully, he, lo he lost to me, and I won. <laughs> We're friends no man, so it's fine. The biggest question actually for parents with kids who want to join these kinds of competitions is, how much help did your dad give you? How much help uh, did my dad Percentage-wise, percentage-wise. So if this is your whole entry, what percent is you and what percent is your dad? He only helped with the budget. <laughs> the overall entry, it's only... Um, because it's unfair naman if he helps, so, and he doesn't really like to help. He teaches and guides, but never really helped with anything, even with school projects. <laughs> well, we're both champion anyway, so as people already know, you have a portal, I have a portal, and I'm pretty sure that we don't have telepathy between the two of us, so why a portal? The portal, because... Um, before contest, before the contest, we always like brainstorming, my dad and I. We would, after dinner, we would talk about, what if I do this, what if I do that? We would um, pass ideas back and forth between us. Um, and then we thought na portal, parang nobody ever did a portal before or anything na below. Because it's hard. It's hard to make something with flat plate na spear or below. So, well, apparently there's four of us now. Yeah. There's one, two, three, there's I saw there's another guy in China, there's another guy in Malaysia now in a portal also. So. Kaya, um, during the time that I was working on it, parang sabi ko, okay, this is the first time people will see portal and then pagdating na submission, I portal, okay, portal din siya. <laughs> so how long did you work on your entry? I worked on my entry one month and a half, I think. Uh, roughly eight that much procrastinating? <laughs> no, because I waited for the results to drop. Because we were talking before, di ba, last year. Di para, what results? No, rules. Oh, rules. Okay, um, rules. We were yeah, talking yeah. talking before last year, na parang they might bring back the recibo, the mm, recibo rule. So I was correct. waiting for that because it would be a waste of money if I buy kids that was suddenly get the recibo. Yeah, for the people who are not from the Philippines, that's a unique rule to our GBWC rules that before every single entry that you put must have a Toys R Us receipt attached to it. So that's, you can look at it both ways. It's either a limitation or it's a challenge for you to work with what you have. But for this year, there's no limitation like that anymore. As long as you have the official sticker of the Philippine distributor, and then, which means you can buy it from either Toys R Us, Toy Kingdom, which is the other big retailer, or online from their site or their other online reseller. So that gives a little bit more flexibility to us. Unlike in every other country, you can just use whatever band I get you have. So in the Philippines, we actually have it a slightly harder, if you like to put it that way. So when the rules drop and then there was no more receipt rule, that's when you bought the kits. Yeah, that's when I immediately went to Toy Town and bought the kits. Toy Town in... Toy Town Shopee. <laughs> Toy Town oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, let's put a shot of your kit here now. So, it's basically a HG Nightingale with HG Gyaradogas. So, from what I can see, one side is like a laboratory, and then the other side is a forest. Um, one side more. is kind of like a hammer base. Parang that's where... 
the nightingale came from and then the other side it portaled into like a mountainside or um, basically a secluded part of the mountains like they got there and then they'll travel a little bit before they get into the war around it's like I have to say, did you do you know this YouTube channel called Laser Creation World? Yeah. Okay. You Enough said. The military tank. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that? Uh, oh, let's do this with Gunsla. It's never been done before yeah. in Gunsla, so we took that inspiration and uh, used Gunsla. Well, how wrong we are! Apparently, there's more than one people have the same inspiration as we did. Well, it's kind of weird and fascinating. Yes. Now. I agree. Same year. Yeah. And everybody thought of portals. Who knows? Did you... So are you now stalking the other under-21 champions on what they're entering? I'm trying to, but I it's so hard to find them. Because people with, like, in Thailand, I've seen um, posts on Facebook na, okay, here are all the entries for the over-21. Mm. So I go to their page, I would scroll, tapos they never post about the under-20 category. So... I don't know you know, Thailand <laughs> I personally thought that last year when you won the under 21 champion this has a real shot of winning something in the world little did we know who beat you uh, Thailand that's why I'm looking out for them this year, this year? it's really I feel like our skill level with the Thailand under 20 entries i feel like my skills and their skills are almost equal so it's a matter of just being subjective with uh, the concept the presentation and stuff. so that's why i'm waiting for them because if their entry their um champion is not as good as mine then i have a chance a higher chance of uh, uh, rem remind who won last year under 21 under 21 china Oh, the big one. Big yeah, okay. I think you can both agree that he's better. Uh, and I'm not mad at it because it's really, really nice. It's Kit Bash, Scratch Blood, and it's also really one of my favorite under-21 entries. But unfortunately, again, for us in the Philippines, we cannot buy a new Zio. So any more plans aside from, well, two-time champion under... 20 uh, you'll still be under 20 i believe by next year because in the rules there's a cut off date if you're born before here and born after here but you'll still be under 20 by next year um i just want to keep joining until i can't join anymore or they prevent me from joining it's really fun for me and even if i don't win of course i want to win it's my goal to always get the goal but even if i don't it's not like I'll throw a tantrum and be mad about it. Um, so yeah, I really just love uh, doing diorama and making really big um, entries. So yeah, I'll keep joining until I can't anymore. How big is your YouTube channel? Right now, it's 7.8 something thousand. You want to disclose how much you make a month? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's between me and YouTube. <laughs> Is it enough to feed a family? It's enough to feed my four dogs. That's what I can say. <laughs> okay, that's a family right there in itself. <laughs> I'm sure your dog food's not cheap. <laughs> so aside from YouTube, yes. how else do you... I mean, you're 20 years old. Your dad is... You're following your dad's footsteps. Do you see this as a... Viable career for other young people out there because right now everybody wants to be a goddamn influencer. So you are actually off not even the beaten path. It's totally tangent of everything else that people are trained, taught, and told to do. I feel like it's doable. If you really want it, if you really love Kantla or even just model making in general, I feel like it's doable to have it as your source of income as you're living but um it's hard it's uh it's time consuming it takes a lot of hard work and effort so if you don't if you feel like um doing this as your job is easy and it's better than 
you know, normal day jobs. Um, it's, I think it's better to just study and graduate because it's hard. It's not as easy as you think. So, yeah. But if you really want to, if you can make it work. It's doable. Well, since you're a two-time champion, well, we both are. Did it add to your credibility, per se, by winning two-time champ? I feel like until I win, win in the under, uh, in the over 21 category, people won't really see me as a champion. Parang, they see the under 20 category as a junior category, which I guess it is a junior category. Actually, it is. Um, it's called junior champion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I feel like until I win, in your category, I won't really be seen as that credible. So let's just wait until the next 2025. <laughs> I understand you also accept commission works now as part of your job. I do, but not always. Um, what do you mean by that always? I'm very picky with the clients and with the kit itself. Like. If I don't like the model kit or if um, I feel the, that the client is too specific or to have too many requests, I'm not going to do your uh, your model. So people watching this say that I want a model kit made by Hershey's champion, but I have to undergo a screening process. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Not really. It's just like a matter of, I feel like I can read people pretty good so if i feel that you're not a good client if you're not easy to talk to then i probably will make you wait i'll tell you that my slots are full and i can work on your model as of this moment okay obviously we're not going to name names but give an example of a client that's makulit makulit meaning very pestery that you re rejected uh i have one uh it's he wants me to build a third party kit and I don't really like working on third parties uh third party kits because it it's painful to hands. It's uh, it's so the fit is tight, it's uh it's too much hassle for just how much money diva. Right? Um and uh he wanted me to customize customize it so I said okay I'll scribe it but not too detailed because that takes a lot of time. Then afterwards, I said, okay, I'll paint it. What colors do you want? And he gave me a list. Now, okay, I want something like this, but also like this. And can you do shading? Can you make this realistic and stuff like that? Sure, if you pay me. And that was like one of the first commissions that I did. So I was 16, 17 at the time. So I always said, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll try it. Even if I've never done it before. Because it's a commission. So after that, it's already painted. And every time, diba, if the kit is already painted, you don't do revisions anymore. Yes, it's very hard to do it's revisions hard. what is done, correct? So I showed it to him, sabi ko, it, uh, decals na lang and panel lining. He wanted me to add, add grace here, can you color separation this and that, sabi. And then, until the time na I did not finish it na lang. Parang, did I, you pay? He did not pay yet. So I just refunded the kit and everything. So where's the kit now? I did not do it anymore. Where's the kit now? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Was there, uh, Can you send a picture of it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, after that, ano, um, I learned to say no na if I can do it or if I know that it takes too much time for the amount of money I'll get, I don't do it anymore. Well, you have now have the... What's karapatan in English? You have the right. Yeah, you have the right to uh, refuse customer because you are two-time world champion and you can choose who you talk to and who you want. But uh, given that you have your YouTube channel, I've seen shorts you have. Also have Patreon? No? You have Patreon. And the kids that you do accept, they're the ones that end up on your channel. Yeah, most of it end up on my channel. But sometimes, if it's really just basic painting, um, I do it quickly and then give it back to the client. I don't uh, film a video for it anymore. How fast is quickly? Uh, the fastest, I think, one week. Because I, I don't like rushing 
uh, I don't like rushing the paint. I don't like rushing the building itself. So one week is the fastest. Three days is doable for a high grade, but I don't want to rush. Rush. So I never do. What's the biggest commission that you've had today? The biggest I have right now, I haven't started yet, but it's a high grade, then throw blue. Oh shit, the big one's like, yeah, big. <laughs> <laughs> Most of your commissions come from local here in the Philippines? It used to come from international clients. I never took any local clients before until one year ago when I met uh, one of my longtime clients. Um, and he's the only local client I have right now. And his friend, which uh, owns the Dendro Oh. So I only have two local clients. And the rest are foreigners. And then after you paint it, you assemble it, you pack it, and you ship it to them. That's huh? why I stopped during the pandemic, I think, because the shipping is super expensive, uh, yeah. even for a high grade. So now it's back to normal. Mm, but I don't take uh, commissions anymore from low, uh, foreign countries. So your earnings. Because the shipping is a hassle, like so, the packing and stuff. Yeah, so your earnings more in, on YouTube now and everything is all online. Uh, again, a feature for dogs. Mm. <laughs> oh, we are these dogs. We were like small ass dogs like this one. I have a big one and I have a big girl and then two shih tzu. Yeah, they're the noisy ones. <laughs> Uh, for people who are watching, and since you're a girl, the obvious question, do you have a boyfriend? No. <laughs> the next question is, why not? Um, I don't think I'm ready yet, and I don't think I have time for a boyfriend yet. Uh, and I'm just enjoying Gunpla right now. But you do have a wish list, right? On what kind of guy you want? Um, I guess, but... I don't really think about it too much right now. Kasi nga, I feel like having a boyfriend takes a lot of your time. Do looks matter? A little bit, but I feel like I can be too... Um, I can't have a too high standards when it comes to that. Parang it's, it's too arrogant of me to uh, say that looks matter. So guys, you have a chance. Give up <laughs> she looks don't really matter that much. <laughs> I mean, Shepra, I'm not gonna entertain somebody who's... Uh, but, who's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, besides, your dad's there to screen them anyway. So, 2024. Okay. What is the oldest... Oh. Uh, we have a uh, uh, text in question. What's the oldest kit you've built? Um, oldest? Probably the Master Grade Cube that was released oh. in 2000. Yeah, that's over 20 years old. That's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> that was my entry for last year's GBW. Let me see. Yes, the one with the big cube lay over the hanger thing with a Zaku at the bottom. We'll flash the picture here of her entry last year. So going forward, so 2024, uh, that's GBWC, and then of course there's GMKC also, the Gundam Model Game Contest for those who have no idea what that is. Uh, I'll give a very, very short rundown of it. GBWC is the official Bandai sponsored contest for the 16 countries that participate. And it's a partnership with Toys R Us. GMKC, on the other hand, is a strictly local Philippine contest, which means Gundam Model Game Contest, and it's in partnership with Toy Kingdom, the other big chain that competes with Toys R Us. Actually, it's even bigger than Toys R Us, so they won their own competition, and it's only a strictly painting competition. No diorama, no kit bash, no nothing. So, of course, they plans to join GMKC. GMKC, any plans to join? GMKC, if I find the right model kit, I will join. Because I have an idea about what kind of painting I want to do. Um, so yeah, if I find the right model kit, I will probably join. Have you joined last year? I did. I oh wait, this year, sorry, that was the last time. No, this year, this year. year. And what did you get? I got the second place. Oh. We'll flash the first place right here now. <laughs> you mentioned that 
if I choose the right model kit, um, there's people who are watching and then I'm sure you get this question often enough that how do I join and how do you start? And um, one thing I've heard that you and your dad talk often is choosing the right model kit. What do you mean by choosing the right model kit? I mean, are they like all Gundam and Gunblock? For us, because it's when it comes to competitions, we feel like and I guess you can say it's tried and tested already by us. Now it's better to use a museum or an, uh, a bigger, chunkier model than using an RX or a protagonist model. Because usually, like with Zeta Gundam, it's quite payat, it's slim, mm. so it's hard to even if you describe it that it looks nice, it looks detailed, but. If you put it in a diorama and then you submit it, it looks really small. Um, if you make the diorama bigger, that's kind of not a good um, idea. Because it will over... How do you say it? It will overshadow the kit itself. And at the end of the day, the judges judge the kit. So if it's a small kit and you have a big diorama, there's a high chance of losing. So for us, a good model kit for competitions is something that's big and chunky, and you have a lot of freedom to customize it, add kit bashing, um, add scribing, and it, and when you submit it, it looks very nice. When you see it from afar, oh, that's a good kit, that's a nice entry. So bigger is better. Yeah. Now that's one tip. Uh... Two more things that you've learned in your years of competition that you will never read in the forums. Oh. Or, well, groups nowadays, for a bold part, yeah. So these are the things that uh, you know intrinsically, but might not be very obvious to other people. So what, the bigger and bigger, better is one of those things. Uh, the second one would be? Uh, I feel like people really don't pay too much attention to the story or the concept itself. Um, I love a good storyline when it comes to my dioramas. I always make, even just for my YouTube channels, I like uh, making a diorama where you can tell a story like, oh, the, the gunplot died because it, this happened and that happened. And I feel like with people, if, um, when they make a diorama, it's always just a battle scene. It's always just two gun plus fighting and it's cool it's really nice it's um it's a very full of action diorama but it's been done hundreds of times before and i agree <laughs> what's what's unique about it like um i feel like people should especially when you join contests i feel like people should pay attention to the concept itself um just as much as they pay attention to the customized that actually might be your third point because, well, we both know this already, but people don't. Uh, concept is, I think, also when you read the rules, it's 30% your mm -hmm. idea. It sounds horribly generic. We say you have a good concept, but what is a good concept? <laughs> it's hard to say because uh, um, uh, sometimes uh, you can think that this concept is good, but it's not really good for others. Like oh, I think this is a perfect concept. And then if I say it to my dad, if I tell him, what if I do this, he'll shoot it down. Yeah, and well, say, you have your dad, but how about the kid that's out there somewhere? Well, that's why we have YouTube with uh, channels and Instagram. They can ask us questions, right? So, um, so if some grandkid says that I want to join this my concept, you will tell them honestly that it's good or bad? Yeah, I'll give them pointers. Oh, I'll give them advice. So there you go. Then that's why now you tell them where to reach you. You, you have I to see have, YouTube. I have a newly made Facebook account. I have an Instagram, Patreon, and YouTube channel all under Nico Soratos. There you go. Now you know where to reach you. And once again, guys, you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being on the Hajime Studio channel. So we'll see you next week again, champ. <laughs>